morning. It's a bit past nine and a short video from me today. I defied every law that I live by in Denmark being here at this very moment. Temperature wise we're gonna hit between 19 and 25 degrees Celsius. For those of you not using this scale, you have to convert it yourself, uh, but today it's going to get hot. So hopefully, I'll have a few hours here, small campfire to scare away the reason why I'm not here. Mosquitoes. And they are here. It's not like the northern part of Sweden and Norway mosquitoes, but they are here. And I'm very allergic. Um, both me and my kids react very bad to getting stung by mosquitoes. But I had to come today. I had to come to do a few things because some people in this community means the world to me. Starting off, this has been my working station, my chopping lock my batoning station, my put my butt down for a rest if everything else is wet station. Uh, I have done everything on this. And I have decided to give it a Viking burial. Normally in Denmark with a Viking burial I would burn it. But a fire consuming this today would be too big and too bad. So I'm gonna lift it up and place it in my firewood stash away from the forest floor and a bit more dry and come fall or a day with less temperature than this and a more wet forest, we're going to burn it. I'm going to build a small fire on top of the platform um, and retire it just like a Viking. She is very used and have made base for many memories with a tool like this.
so what I actually came here to do was to send a warm message to a new friend in the world of Axis. Zach, if you're watching buddy, I hope you are, uh, you've seen me unpack the Collins, you've seen photos, but you haven't seen it here, not live, but almost. Um, There are many axes in the world, many axes, but I think this one calls for a small story. So she has a story. Zach owns and runs Keen Timber and Tools. And um, Zach does other things in wood um, besides axes. So when I when I first saw, I figured I I just have to I just have to ask him. So I wrote Zach, told him who I was, what I did, um, and I had no expectations, no plans, no nothing. I asked him, would you do me the honors of sometime at some point? Um, help me do an axe. He said yes. Um, so, which axe? My my original thought, and and don't get me wrong on this, but my original thought, just for an hour, was to get a black raven. Black ravens are very rare, uh, and have over the last period of time become something you collect. I collect axes too, but I use them. And for me to wish for a black raven would be to break 
this collecting part of of having an axe and putting it on the wall and um, demanding extremely high prices for a very used head. Um, so for for that idea, I wanted to have a black raven, but I wanted to use it. I wanted to show people, have it, enjoy it, and use it. Same as having a vintage vintage Ferrari or a vintage British sports car and not driving it. Same. Uh, yes, it will decrease in value, but it's it's the way you're supposed to enjoy it. Sorry. Um, so not a black raven. Um, I threw that thought away um, after an hour, um, and then I began to to think what iconic head would be amazing, amazing steel, amazing quality, uh, very useful for what I do in the woods. So <laughs> Zach told me, uh, he asked me, what head? And I, with deepest respect for the possibility that this might not even be possible, wrote a Collins Legitimus. And he said, Give me a few days, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> that's not gonna happen." Uh, a few days pass, m maybe not even that, uh, and he sent me an, an, a picture. With that logo covered in rust and sap, uh, and he told me she's here, and I was like, <laughs> "What? <laughs> that's..." The for me, as a four-year-old four year ex-enthusiast, getting a picture of a Collins Legitimus head saying, she's here, it's yours, I was stunned, absolutely stunned. Um, but she came, and Zach was a complete gentleman, very kind, very professional, um, and took me through the restoration part, picture by picture, measurement by measurement, uh, small nicks in the head saying, that's not the best patina, could we do something about that? Uh, there was a small nick on the bottom and he evened it out with, I believe, an angle grinder and it's, it just looks like uh, scarring from, from a war blade. It just, looks amazing um, but getting a, ha a head the colors legitimate head getting that getting it restored and Zach you remember dropping the head um, just an amazing guy all the way but the big finale for this is sitting here 28 inches of hickory, grain oriented, absolutely flawless, don't know if you can see, if you can, no run outs, and the shoulder part Zach, how on earth is this possible? I had a dude on uh, on Danish social media posting a picture of this, saying, "This is not a user axe." <laughs> but it is. I'm going to use this. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to take the best of care I can. Um, And splitting a log that size with an axe like this uh, is maybe a bit too much for what I'm asking for it. Uh, but I am going to ask that of it sometimes. I am going to do it safe. I am going to do it on a stump. 
I am going to do it kneeling down with my arms straight so that whatever samurai magic he worked on this <laughs> is never coming near my legs. Should I at some point take down a tree, I figured I would take it very slow, very controlled, uh, cut, um, cut, uh, make it make a cut in the base, and then sit on my knees, working with the axe and clearing out material, and then doing the same process on the back, moving up being a bit higher, so the tree can come over. At some point, I I want to try. Um, hand filed and beautiful and strong as an ox and this is my second or third time throwing this into a stump and there is absolutely no movement it doesn't move a muscle it has handle flex uh, but perfect hang. So, one last thing. You might have noticed if you're into axes that the bottom part of my handle, palm swell, thorns foot, no, not calling on it. No, it's not. I was gonna call it a knob, but that's probably something else, something dirty. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, Fawn's foot or palm swell? Maybe the Fawn's foot is uh, is used when it's shaped a bit different. Not sure. But this is my palm. This is where this is where it swells out. So that's what I'm gonna say. Palm swell. Uh, Zach, he told me. Would you mind terribly if we did something experimental, something that I haven't done before? And I was like, hit me. OD Green Micata. You use that on, on, uh, on Enzo knives and Ben Offord uses it on knives. Uh, top level knives have that material laminated around the blade, durable, strong, Absolutely perfect. My axe has a laminated green OD green micata palm swell. And I figured the gentleman has. Not the same size hands as I do, but but it's very close. I do this sometimes. I do this with axes. I do this with axes I collect. I do this because this matters to me. It matters to the person taking the time, crafting, something like this that I can keep till I'm an old man um, use, not abuse, use, care, treat and enjoy and above all create memories I come here creating memories I come here to enjoy the silence I come here to use a tool like this and I come here to listen to the birds so if you're a fisherman, an axeman, a golfman or whatever just enjoy what's best for you There's a spider on my working stump. Away.
today is not going to be the longest video. I came here today for the purpose changing my work stump and sending a message to a friend. Um, I hope that the next time I'll see you would be in a bit different environment than this. Um, I hope because the mosquitoes here are only getting worse. It's a beautiful day though. I think the fire is working. I did a small fire with some left leftover firewood uh, hoping to kick away the box with, with some smoke and I think it's working. I think it's working. Take care boys and girls.